Hello and welcome to another Demon 212 Wii U review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Super Mario 3D World, which we've never played it before, it's a Mario game. Um, there's a lot of people praising this as probably the best Mario game ever, as with pretty much every Mario game. It's very similar to the Call of Duty franchise, honestly. The, the amount of times that the new game just happens to be so much more amazing. Personally, I don't think it's that great. Uh, I think it's a very, very good Mario game overall. But uh, I fail to see how games like this can get 10s and that and games like Knack can get 6s and that because I think both of them are not so much similar in terms of obviously game or anything like that but it's both don't really do anything to wow the franchise, to wow the genre, to wow anything like that. You know that there's nothing particularly about them that basically go you can only get that experience here and in Knack's case that garnered them terrible reviews and in Mario's case it garnered them stellar reviews and it's probably because it was Mario. Now there is another reason why it could have scored so favourably and that's because this probably has the best game in the world uh, and I'm playing it now because I'm playing Luigi Bros. No Mario at all whatsoever. All Luigi, all the time, and quite frankly, as everyone knows who's seen my vids before, I can't stand Mario. I, I really can't. He, he's smug, he's arrogant, he, he's just, well, he's a douche, quite frankly. There's no other way to put it. He thinks the world revolves around him at the end of the day. He's always the lead character. He's always the one who says, well, it's up to me to save the princess. And Every step of the way, Luigi's there doing the same stuff that Mario does, but he's not bragging about it. And seeing as Luigi is terrified the entire time he's doing it, that's showing that he's got far more guts and he's just far more brave because he's overcoming his fear in order to save a princess who, quite frankly, wants nothing to do with him. And it's a disgrace, really. Quite frankly, Princess Peach needs her head checking. She really does. Anyway... Uh, joking aside, I'm on an early file here, and you can play as four characters, but honestly there's only one you're going to want to play as. Um, Peach has her float ability from previous Mario games. Toad, as far as I'm aware, runs, I'll be honest, I've, I've yet to play as them. Mario is Mario, and Luigi is the best character in the game, simply because he's Luigi. Uh, you might notice a bit of a pattern here, because uh, I'm going to go to an earlier world because the reason I'm on world 3 is because I don't want to particularly do spoilers for anyone because everyone kicks off and I will always remember revealing Donkey Kong in a game where he shouldn't have technically been in it and that was why it was amazing and everyone went absolutely nuts basically having a go at us for saying how dare I say that so I'm going to be keeping spoiler stuff secret however I'm going to be vague with the stuff that I have to mention which for example is the amount of worlds so if you don't want to know absolutely at all how many worlds there are, I'm not going to be mentioning the special ones like which you get, because everyone knows there's going to be special worlds, because there always is. So hopefully they'll have stopped listening now. There's 12 worlds overall, there's basically 6 regular and then 6 special, uh, is probably the way to put it, because you get world 1 to 6 and then you get special, you know, you get world something and world something and something and something and something and something again. So anyway. As you might have noticed when I've been running all the way back to the first level, every single one of those flags is a Luigi flag. Depending on who you beat the level with depends on what flag you get, and we only ever play the game one player, me and my brother, because while this is a far better multiplayer experience than any of the other multiplayer Marios, it still isn't perfect. It, there's still many a time when it just doesn't work properly, so we'd much rather just play the game the way we always have we take turns we each do a level if someone misses something on a level like if one of us misses um uh, one of the stars because it's stars now instead of star coins or one of us misses a stamp which puts a sticker in your sticker book which uh i said it in the putty squad ps4 review that actually it's quite weird that two platforms have came out in the same week in the uk both of which having a sticker book so that was quite cool it's just like it's something that has been ages to, like I've not seen for ages since for probably Sticker Star, which was a whole game about stickers, and all of a sudden two come out in the same week, on the same day, to be fair. But uh, as well as those 
there's also the ability to get the golden flag, same as on 3D land, which is why you also might have noticed that all the flags on, as I was running past were gold. Uh, the golden flag is actually incredibly easy to do on this one, to the point that I don't even know why they bothered adding it, because whereas with Mario 3D Land, as long as you had a Tanuki suit, you were pretty much sorted, you could have enough skill with the Tanuki suit and it would help you along the way, but you still had to have some skill with the Tanuki suit, then you, you could get the golden flag. With the cat suit, I don't even know if it's actually possible not to get the golden flag. I mean, I'm going to try jumping at the very base of the flag, something I never aim for, and see how far it climbs me up. So, virtually all the way there. So, literally, all you ever have to do is just make a, si a proper sized jump, and you're going to get the golden flag. So, it's, it makes me wonder why they've actually added it. It, it really does. Um, because at least if it was some like required a lot of skill or something in timing, then at least it would be an accomplishment to get the gold flag and everything. Instead, it just means don't lose a cat suit or make sure you carry a spare with you. Uh, I've already mentioned the multiplayer, and the reason we have still at least played it is because while, as far as we're concerned, there's only one character you should ever play as, and that's Luigi, the game feels otherwise. And there is a section on one of the, I think it's on World 2, what the first time you see it, where there's a button that can only be pushed by Mario, so we had to have uh, one of us pick up the Wii Remote and unfortunately play as the smug, arrogant so-and-so, and, -so, and uh, we just made sure that Luigi still won that level, and by winning a level in uh, multiplayer, because you might be thinking I thought it was co-op, well it is, but they've actually made it proper versus mode now I suppose, because you can actually win a level and you get a crown, and then you can fight each other for the crown, and it's just weird. Um, the reason though that you might have already flamed me for this in the comments uh, because of what I was saying about Knack and how not, none, neither of these games really does anything for the genre you might be thinking well what about this, this wasn't in 3D land and this wasn't in 3D land and while this does improve upon 3D land in some ways by adding more gameplay aspects nothing that I've seen is stuff that I haven't seen if you know what I mean everything that this adds is stuff that I have seen before time and time and time again in other platformers so I fail to see how one game gets so universally praised for absolutely doing nothing differently and another one gets absolutely slammed for doing absolutely nothing differently um, while they are nice additions for anyone who's only played 3D land it, it's it is the sort of thing that uh, as I say nothing is particularly new or groundbreaking which is why if I'm honest I think I probably prefer 3D land because with the 3D Marios, as anyone who's seen my vids before knows, I can't stand the mission based ones, they're not Mario, they should have made it a new franchise and set it off, even if they just made it like you play as one of the other Mario characters and they weren't Mario games, then I think I probably would have been able to enjoy them more because I wouldn't go into them thinking I'm going to be playing Mario. When 3D Land came about, I was over the moon because it's the first true time that we've had a game that is Mario that you would play as a Mario Bros game but in 3D and that's all this is. It's more the same. It's like New Super Mario Bros 2. So for that reason, I honestly can't say it's absolutely phenomenal because it's more the same but I think I would have preferred that than Nintendo doing their usual. Because at the end of the day, the, the thing I've always been slated for most about my Nintendo vids is whenever Nintendo do something, they don't just do it. They tend to insist on changing something in some way that can either make the game even better or can absolutely ruin it. it it's why, it, I mean... Anyone who's only just getting into gaming won't know this. Anyone who's been into gaming since the NES or the SNES or anything like that, if you play every single Mario Kart game back to back, you are not playing Mario Kart, if you know what I mean. Um, at no point will you be doing the same thing on each Mario Kart, because they just they change it every time. Um, other than A Link to the Past into Ocarina of Time, then there isn't even two Zeldas that play identical, and even then, th one of them's in 3D, so that was its gimmick, basically, that it went into the third dimension. Sorry about this. I'll get onto the blowing in a minute. Um, 
And basically, it's why a lot of times you either love or hate Nintendo games, I find. You, you can't actually just find you like them all. There's a, there's always got to be something, and you either love it or you hate it. So whenever they do something like this, where it is just more the same, I'm actually breathing a sigh of relief, quite frankly, a lot of the time, because at least that way, then I know I'm going to at least like the game. Whereas, with uh, if they'd added a huge gimmick to it... Like, um, at, at the time I was worried that the gimmick for New St. Mary Bros. 2 about collecting the coins was actually going to ruin it. And then I found out collecting the coins was purely a gimmick because you didn't have to do it at all. You could just play it as a Mario game. So all of a sudden it went from being a collectathon just into a Mario game. The only things that this has done that's particularly new, is, as I say, is only new to Mario 3D Land, if you know what I mean. So it's in the 3D world, and it's the stuff you've seen is doing here, and it's the stuff that I'm not too keen on because the game essentially tries to make you have to do seven things at once. So here I've got platforms that I've got to blow into the microphone in order to move. There's then platforms that I've got to touch on the touchpad, and I can't just touch anywhere on the touchpad. I've actually got to touch them on the touchpad whilst I'm uh, playing the game. So, there's a section coming up very, very soon, and it's why I've put this level on, and I think it might be here. There's, you might be able to see where the hand's pointing, because I'm touching there. There's a blowy bit, and under there's a star. Now, apologies that's a spoiler for anyone, but you see it as soon as you go past the first time level. So I've got to manage to touch that pad, then walk, jump, touch that pad, then walk, jump, touch that pad, walk, jump, keep, blowing long enough so that I fall onto the platform then land, get the star blow some more, jump on there touch there, jump on there and the blocks as you've seen keep disappearing so it essentially it, it tries to make you have three hands at once whilst also blowing and quite frankly this one's just as bad if not worse so I'll be very quick so I can actually continue talking. There we go. And it's things like that that just annoy the hell out of me. It really is. Why the hell couldn't I just play that as a proper level? It's the, the worst part about it. I am a germaphobe. I, I, I've never hid the fact that I'm a germaphobe. I, I've been a germaphobe for quite some time. So seeing as the market these as family friendly games. Just like for Dad and Gran and Mam and little Johnny to sit there on the couch and all play it together. Can you imagine if, you know, like for example, little Johnny was home sick from school and wanted to play the game with his parents and he had the flu and maybe Dad wanted to go to work at some point uh, but really wasn't feeling that well himself that just because he was too tired at the time that he didn't really have anything wrong with him. But little Johnny then gets the pad blows all over the pad and as with unfortunately a lot of people tend to do blowing involves spitting for some reason so then you're covering the pad with your germs and then you're passing it over Nintendo are effectively bringing about the apocalypse really I mean there's no other way to put it I mean that may be over the top but uh, the, there's no other way to put it then if during the holiday season one of you, or both of the parents in the family are working and the kid's not well and the kid's blowing on it, then that's going to spread to the parents and then the parents are going to spread it on the public transport and then, you see what I mean? I am a germaphobe, I'm very anal, I think these things through and I fail to see what blowing has to have as a mechanic in a game. I do not know what it adds other than a degree of germs. Because everything that's done by blowing, it can be done by just having a platform that moves by itself. There's no need to have to blow, touch with your fingers and also hold the pad in an awkward way so you can run and jump all at the same time. There's absolutely no need for it at all whatsoever. So, it, it's why, as I say, I'm probably going to get slated from a lot of people who have a go at me for things like that. And I don't particularly care. It's stuff that I think about and stuff that, therefore... I wanted to mention so there it is it's out there now basically though as an actual Mario game as a platformer game as I say I don't think it does anything new anything spectacular anything groundbreaking that no other Mario games done before for that reason I really like the game because it just plays just like Mario 3D Land except without a 3D depth slider which thing as I can't see in 3D anyway doesn't bother me at all whatsoever because I never could play that in 3D so for me, this is probably the perfect sequel 
but I also there can't help but see it that it's not as good as 3D Land because I've now experienced it before and I've experienced it again with this one and I've, and I've essentially had the same experience twice in a row so at least while that means that I don't absolutely hate the game it also means that I can't absolutely gush about the game either because it hasn't done anything to make me want to gush about it so it's why that I go back to saying and I don't care if I get slated I think a lot of people who've reviewed this have simply went, ah, it's Mario, we'll give it a 10, or ah, it's Mario, we'll give it an extra two points, tack it up, and instead they've looked at it and they've thought, well, it's Knack, no one's heard of Knack, who cares about Knack, let's deduct it a couple points just for that reason. I do think that a lot of reviewers who have reviewed both games that are in both pretty much an identical genre have been very unfair and biased in a lot of ways towards these uh, games and it is a bit of a shame because as far as I'm concerned they're both solid platformers and both ones that any platforming fan worth their salt needs to go out and buy because you'll have a lot of fun with them. This one is going, uh, easily the better game because at the end of the day even a standard Mario game is going to be better than a lot of standard platformers but to see a one is perfect while the other one is pretty terrible is just inaccurate as far as I'm concerned because I, I personally do not see it that way. So there we go then, that's been the review, I hope you found it helpful. I don't score the games because that's based purely on opinion, so instead I'll leave you to make your own mind up. So thanks for watching and if you've got any questions about the game that I didn't answer in the vid or that hasn't been answered in the comments then feel free to ask and I'll help if I can. Also if you did find it helpful don't forget to check out my channel because there's plenty more like this up there and don't forget to subscribe because there'll be plenty more to come as well. So until next time this has been Demon212. Signing off.